This is a continuation of an analysis of the ruin of Cash by Roberto Calasso, in which he deals with the subject of modernity. I'm going to be talking about a paragraph on page 100, where he says, Equality is an initiatory idea. Only through a highly artificial process, such as initiation, can one succeed in evoking the equal, an entity that does not exist in nature. After 1789, when Masonic emblems became the basis and tacit premise of civic life, though their character as emblems and their initiatory ancestry have been forgotten, the world of inversions defines its territory. Double movement. All are initiates, but initiation itself vanishes definitively from immediate reference. It remains only in the perennial shadow of conspiracy and will emerge again in libraries with the great academic ethnographers. So essentially here he is saying that in nature there are hierarchies. In humanity there are different kinds of hierarchies. Worldly hierarchies consist of differences in class and wealth, profession and education. Humanity naturally arranges itself into these different classes. There are also prophetic hierarchies. These hierarchies are hierarchies of virtue and knowledge of the divine source. There is a quality of race, as is well known, where the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, said that there is no difference between the black and the red. But there are differences in status in terms of knowledge of the divine source and ethical conduct. In chapter 39, verse 9 of the Qur'an, it says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Are those that know the same as those who do not know? The Qur'an also mentions that there are different degrees in the afterlife, different stations at which each soul resides depending upon its virtue and knowledge of the Divine Source. Another interesting thing about this paragraph is that Calasso here seems to be referring to the words of Henri Corbin, who in his work on the Barzakh, the intermediary spiritual realm between this realm and the angelic realm, also talks about inversion. In his discussion on Alaudawla Semnani's elaboration of different levels of time, featured in On Islam Iranian, pages 176 to 180, Kuban talks about how there is the time of the horizon and the time of the soul based on chapter 41, verse 53 of the Qur'an, where it says, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, we will show them our signs on the horizons and in their souls. So there is the time of the horizon, Zaman Afaqi, and there is the time of the soul, Zaman Anfusi. Kuban says, that Semnani's extraordinary hermeneutic, his interiorization of prophetic types, operates, as we will see, at different depths of the dimension that has been opened up. But it is not enough to be understood that, once interiorized, the events remain entirely real and happen in real time. Certainly, this time is not Zaman Afaqi, the time of the horizons, cosmic time that is quantitative, continuous, measured by the turning of the planets. 
It is zaman unforeseen. Psycho-spiritual time, qualitative time, existential time, the time of the events of the soul. Not measurable in homogeneous units given by the course of the turning of the spheres. With regard to the journey from one world to the other, the turning from the historical time of the world to the historical time of the soul Semnani has suggested the incommensurability of their limits. Citing this Quranic verse, which echoes one of the Psalms, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, One day for your Lord is like a thousand years according to that which you count. Chapter 22, verse 46. So he's talking about how the time of the secular world does not match exactly the time of the spiritual world. And then he talks about inversion. So he says this inversion of time signifies the journey to a new level of consciousness. It implies the interior metamorphosis of man. So the interior transformation of the human being. And it is why it is not simply a matter of allegorizing. This shifting is both that which makes possible and that which produces the interiorization of the sense, meaning the interiorization of the phenomena relative to external historical events, henceforth perceived in the time of the soul, the time of your Lord. In other words, in order to access the time of the soul, we have to go within. When you turn within, a new interior landscape then opens up. But this turning within requires a metamorphosis within us. Kalasso also talks about the double movement of the Neoplatonic model of descent and ascent the descent of the revelation into the lower realms. We could call it the realm of the horizons or the time of the horizons. And the ascent back through ta'wil, through returning to the interior meaning of the book. And the term double movement is mentioned in Ori Corbin's Comparative Spiritual Hermeneutics, page 92. In his Comparative Spiritual Hermeneutics, he writes, Prophecy and Imamat, or Walayat, correspond to a double cosmic movement, Mabda and Ma'ad, Genesis and Return, Descent and Ascent to the Origin, to this double movement correspond, on the one hand, Tanzil, revelation, the act of sending down the sacred book, the letter of which the Prophet is instructed to express, the Shariat, the law, the positive religion, and, on the other hand, Ta'wil, which is in the act of bringing back the letter of revelation to its true sense. Spiritual exegesis which is the function of the imam. This true sense is the spiritual sense, the haqiqat, or idea. So here Kalasso seems to be saying that the world of inversion, which would usually remain hidden, becomes visible and democratized in civic life. But the irony is that once it becomes democratized, then all are initiates. Everyone is wearing a Masonic emblem, but no one has actually been initiated or understands what initiation is. Kalasso references Corban's phrase, double movement, but reframes it in the context of modernity. The esoteric enters the realm of the exoteric, but only in its outward form. The esoteric in itself disappears indefinitely. It becomes identified with conspiracy. So you could say that 
the idea of the esoteric becomes corrupted and converted into this idea of conspiracy instead. The esoteric is identified with conspiracy instead of knowledge and is only referred to in books in libraries. In other words, it no longer exists in society. It's written about but not practised. And only ethnographers, people that are interested in the emblems of culture, are going to be interested in accessing those books. The same happened in Islamic society with the explosion of spiritual brotherhoods in the 12th and 13th centuries. The democratisation of the spiritual path, which ironically led to a vanishing of the genuine esoteric path. This is why when talking about people converting to Islam, the issue is not about numbers only. If we consider Islam as a path to esoteric forms of knowledge, then it could be argued that large numbers converting are not the end of the story. The question is, how many are truly Ahl al people of esoteric knowledge?